Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pixel and Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it an incredible one. Today we'll learn one of the most fundamental techniques of adding text behind subject, but we'll take it a step further by adding real shadows and lighting effects. So without any further ado, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. Back at the magical world of Photoshop, and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we'll do is with the background layer selected, we'll press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate of that. Now, in this duplicate, we'll remove the background. One of the easiest ways of doing that is selecting any of these three tools: the Object Selection, Quick Selection, or the Magic Wand, and click on Select Subject at the top. It automatically selects the subject, and in the later versions of Photoshop, it is way, way more accurate. Once it is done, you can click on the mask button right here. So right now, this is separate. Here in this layer, we just have the subject. One of the other ways of doing that is let's go back to how it was. You can easily click on Remove Background on the contextual taskbar. If you're not able to see this, just right-click outside the canvas, click on Show Contextual Taskbar, and again, this is only available in the later versions of Photoshop. And right in here, simply click on Remove Background. It does the same thing and just simplifies the entire process that we did. And in this layer, we just have the subject. For our convenience, let us name this layer Subject. And behind this layer, we'll add our text with the background layer selected again. Click on the T, the text tool, and you can type in whatever you want. I'm just going to type in happy, and you can change the color of the text by pressing Ctrl or Command A to select it all, or just select it all, and click on this box at the top and pick whatever color you want. I'm going to go with white and hit OK. Now, with the help of the Move tool here, press Ctrl or Command T. You can also move it around, up to you, and let's make it larger, like so. This sounds about right. You can also place it at the very center. Hit enter or return once you're satisfied. At this point, you have already created the text behind the subject. Here on top, we have the subject. Behind that, we have the text. And behind that, we have the complete image. You can select the text layer. You can move it around. You can change the text. Do whatever you wish. Now it is time for us to add some shadows and lighting effects. Notice that she's standing in a place where there are a lot of trees. So what if we create the shadows of the leaves on the text? Wouldn't that look interesting? And you can look for shadows of leaves online. There are so many available. I have one already ready for this image. All you have to do is to just drag it and drop it over the text layer. Hit enter or return. Now you can use blend modes. You can change the blend mode from normal to multiply, and there you go. It already looks incredibly interesting. The surface of the text was already white, so you didn't have to worry about blend modes. But the multiply blend mode is useful when the text is of a different color other than white. If I were to change the color of the text to something like yellow, this would make sense. For right now, let's leave it how it is. Now on top of that, we have to create the shadow of the subject. And how will the shadow be? Always follow the lighting when it comes to creating shadows. See where the light is falling. That will decide the shape, direction, and the position of the shadow. In this case, since the light is on the extreme right, the shadow would be somewhere here, and it would be a bit stretched. For it, let us make a selection of the subject. We already have a mask, so hold the Control or Command and click on the Mask button. Just above the Foliage Shadows layer, we will click on the Adjustment layer icon and choose Solid Color. And you can fill it with black, white, whatever you wish at this point. I'm going to pick black for shadows. We will change this later. Now let us select this mask, press Ctrl or Command T and move it right here. And here we have the shadow and it would be a bit down, something like so. Now the shadow would also be a bit stretched. So right click on it and choose Distort here and you can stretch it like so. That seems about right. Once you are happy with it, hit enter or return. Now we need to pick the right color for this shadow. We cannot just decrease the opacity or choose a lighter color and change the blend mode to multiply because if we do that, both the shadows will combine. And in some areas, it's going to get darker and we don't want that. For it, we need to pick a solid color. So let's make sure the opacity of this layer is at 100. Double click here and we will pick the color. And while you're picking the color, you need to make sure the sample is set to all layers. Let's pick a color from this dark shadow area. And this just works. I'm going to make it slightly brighter by setting the brightness to 70. Hit OK. And there you go. It matches. Now, there's still a problem with that. Both the foliage shadow and the subject shadow should be limited just to the text. For it, we need to create a clipping mask. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. Right now, the foliage is limited just to the text. Do the same for this one. 
hold the alt key or the option key and click on the line between these two layers and there you go now it starts to look amazing now of course this shadow here although it looks fine it needs to be slightly blurred so instead of being destructive about it you can just select the mask or double click on it to open up the properties if it doesn't open just select the mask and open up the properties from here if you still cannot see it go to window and you want to make sure properties is checked and from here just increase the feather the more you increase it the softer it's going to get let's set it to about six pixels and that works for this particular image looks fine and if it feels a bit too soft which i think it is let's go back here and set it to maybe two i think that is a better number here and there you go but we're not yet done i want you to take a little break from this go get some water coffee tea whatever you like get a little rest and then look at it back again later maybe even the next day sometimes we are so engrossed in our work that we may miss the details that can make your work incredibly better in this case i feel the shadow needs a little more adjustment select the mask of the subject shadow here press ctrl or command t right click on it and choose distort and you can stretch it further and maybe even bring it close that way it looks a little better and there's so much more we can do here actually and to stay organized let us not forget naming the less by double clicking on the text and this one is subject shadow now it's time for us to add a little more realism to the shadows since she is standing very close to the text there's going to be a bit of darkness there right because a lot of ambient light is not getting there so just for the subject layer make sure that layer is selected let us create a drop shadow double click on the right hand side of this layer this opens up the layer style dialog box inside of that check and select drop shadow now here's a cool trick you can move the shadow directly on the canvas so with the help of your cursor like so you don't even have to worry about the distance the angle it just happens automatically so i'm going to place it right about there and change the size let's increase it all the way to the right hand side and decrease the opacity so let's keep it somewhere around this number by the way you can adjust all of this later and set the distance a little closer maybe 218 is fine once you're happy hit okay now you can separate the drop shadow on a separate layer if you want to make further changes for it with that layer still selected go to layer layer style and create layer hit okay this separates the drop shadow you'll notice the fill is set to 58 this is the same value that we set inside of the layer style dialog box you can increase it back to 100 up to you and you can move it around wherever you wish now i recommend going to filter convert for smart filters and then apply whatever filter you want so you can change the values later now let's go to filter blur gaussian blur you want it to be a little more blurred so at about i would say 140 that works for this one hit okay now we also want it to be limited to just to the text and how do we do that clipping mask hold the alt key or the option key and click on the line between these two layers fantastic but this is too much so let's decrease the opacity slightly and keep it somewhere around what do you say about 28 that adds a little bit of realism i would even actually go ahead and increase the opacity slightly 32 that looks better now it is time for us to add some highlights and slight 3d effects to the text so double click on the right hand side of the text layer you can turn on bevel and emboss if you are not able to see this click on fx and choose bevel and emboss from here since it is already here it is grayed out so check bevel and emboss and it adds a wonderful highlight around the corners you can choose the depth amount let's increase it all the way to 1000 you can control the size you see what is happening right there so i'm going to set it to about 6 that is nice you can also soften it so if the size is larger and if you soften it see what happens it just softens the edges of the fold so we're going to keep it zero size at about 6 and you can also set the intensity of the highlights and shadows by using these sliders at the bottom so here is highlight opacity you can decrease it or increase it i'm going to keep it all the way to 100 and there is shadow opacity let's keep it a bit higher you'll be able to see it here at about 28 to 32 28 seems nice now in this case the direction of light just works perfectly and in line with the direction of light on the subject right but if it is not if this area is not bright and this area is not dark you can change the direction of light by using this diagram here if this point is here the light is coming in from the left hand side and as you can see the left hand side is bright the right hand side is dark so i'm going to keep it this way 
this works for this image, hit OK. Now this looks fantastic, but there is one issue. If you zoom in, you'll notice that the area where the shadow falls for the subject, this area is equally bright and it shouldn't be. So how do we fix that? Let's go back to bevel and emboss. We just need to decrease the highlight opacity slightly. So let's decrease it and keep it at about I would say 64. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And now that area is slightly darker in line with how it should be. Now, congratulations, the image is ready. But is it really? If you zoom in, you'll notice the masking may not be perfect. You need to take your time to finesse the mask before you finalize the image. We just need to select the mask of the subject, take the brush and just make it better slowly and gradually with black as the foreground color. And you can use any of your favorite masking techniques. You can even use the smudge tool. If we select the smudge tool, strength at 50, normal is fine. You want to make sure that the mask is selected. Make the brush slightly smaller, slowly and gradually just push it like so. There you go. Easily fixed. And you can make the edges harsher later if you wish to, but this just works for quick fixes. You can even improve the hair areas by painting over them. For example, this area may look a little off, but in this case it works. But if it looks a little off, just above the subject layer, create a new layer, take the brush. You can use a few hair brushes available for pro members to download the complete set, but I will leave one for you for this particular tutorial. So let's scroll down. Here I have hair close, and all I have to do is to hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample, and just paint in a few strands, like so. You can also pick the single brush, and paint in a couple more strands. Now, if they look too sharp, you can take the blur tool, click and hold on the smudge tool group, select the blur tool, strength 50 is fine for now, and just slightly blur it, slightly paint over it to blur it. And that's how you can just add a little more detail and realness to it. Now it's time for us to do some finishing touches. If you zoom out, you'll notice that the text is not standing out. To make it stand out even more, just above the background layer, the main image, Let's create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing curves. All we have to do is to darken the background to make the text stand out even more. Take the rightmost point down like so, and let's increase the contrast further. And this works brilliantly. Without it, it's not standing out as much, and with it, works wonders. You can also add some texture to the background, makes it look really good. For it, select the topmost layer and then press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. This creates a stamp visible layer at the top. In other words, a merged layer of everything you see in the canvas right now. Now let's go to filter, convert for smart filter so that whatever filter you apply, you can change the values later. Now go to filter, camera, raw filter. One of my favorite ways to add grain. Open up effects, scroll down, just increase the grain amount. I'm going to keep it right about 50, increase the size as well to about 42. That works brilliantly. Hit OK once it's satisfied. Now the grain is all around. If you want to keep it that way, you can keep it that way. But if you just want to keep it in the background, we have the mask that we can use. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, drag and drop the subject mask here. Right now it is only on the subject. We want the opposite. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now we have the grain only in the background. Looks pretty darn cool. And you can change the settings of that later. So there you go. That's how to add text behind subject and actually go the extra mile. Except for the camera raw step, if you turn it off, you can change the text, move it around at any time. If I double click on the T, you can change it to whatever you wish. Move it around. It's absolutely under your control. Just to share with you a little bit of recap and to refresh your memories, the first thing we need to do is to separate the subject. Here we have the image, right? We separated the subject by making a copy of it and masking just the subject out. So this layer only has the subject. Now we added the text between them like a sandwich and you can move the text, do whatever you want at this point. And that's how to add text behind subject. But we didn't stop there. We added a bit more effects. On top of that, we added some shadows of the foliage by using the blend mode multiply. On top of that, we added the shadow of the subject by using the selection from the mask and stretching it a little bit. And we added a little more darkness here to make it a bit more realistic. Then we added some bevel and emboss effect to the text to add some highlights around the edges. And finally, we fine tuned and improved the mask and the edges and even painted hair where it was required like so, see, to make it more natural. And we also darkened the background to make the text stand out even more. 
After that, there are optional effects you can apply like grain or texture in the background and maybe also a little bit on the subject, up to you. So that's how to really add text behind subject in Photoshop. This tutorial uses concepts of masking, blend modes and a bunch of other things. And if you wish to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond mastering all of those concepts so you never have to memorize the steps, I highly recommend that you check out Piximperfect Pro, the ultimate guide to master Photoshop with over a hundred lessons, 200 plus practice projects where you actually follow along and learn by doing. Check out what is included, what is there and what creatives are saying about it only on piximperfect.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?